Welcome to Analog Jones in the Temple Film. I'm Steve. And I'm Matt, and uh, working on a new friend over here. Oh yeah, what do you... D looks like you're carving some wood. Uh, what, what is that? This is this is going to be my, my pup Pinocchio. Oh, really? Can I see what it looks like? Yeah, of course. Oh, Jesus Christ! Thing looks awful! It's got dead eyes! Time to fire up the VCR. This one's my favorite. This week, we reviewed the VHS of The Adventures of Pinocchio from 1996. It was rated G, and the production company was New Line Cinema. And it's New Line Cinema's first G-rated movie. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't. I can't believe that. The, the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, that wasn't rated G? Nope. Mm. BG. No, yeah, I know. <laughs> it wasn't it's a little violent. A yeah, little violent. <laughs> didn't Raphael just yell shit? Probably. Yeah, I don't know. I love <laughs> that movie, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, we also had a couple other production companies. Uh, Savvy Pictures, I only bring that up because I know they did American History X. Oh, okay. Just a little bit different than this. Yeah. Different a little, tonally. A little different, yeah. But about the same amount of violence, I would say. <laughs> and, I th and swastikas. I think they did... I, d this is not something I know for certain, but I think they did Tales from the Hood as well. Oh, wow. <laughs> a bunch of studios involved in this one. Everyone was excited to work on this film. And obviously it was a big summer release. July 26, 1996 is when this one dropped. Yeah, and they, they had a good budget on this. $25 million estimated. And you can tell... I yeah, can tell this no, had a, a good budget. big budget 90s movie for sure. It had a gross in the USA of 15 million and collectively in the worldwide gross of 36. So it didn't make a lot of money, probably after marketing and everything. They might have lost. So who knows? But, you know, with the VHS world, maybe they made the money back. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there must they must have made enough money to warrant the sequel that we got, and we'll talk about that later, but uh, it made enough to have that happen. This this was directed by an Irish director, Steve Barron, who I looked up before we came to this, and, you know, you've got listed here Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, 1990, mm -hmm. Coneheads, one of my favorites from the 90s. He's a, he's a, definitely was a popular 90s director, but also, he's the director of the Take On Me music video. He did a lot of music videos. He did videos. a lot of music videos, but I mean, that's like one of the top five probably greatest music videos of all time, and, yeah, and I also, he is the man behind it. I also saw he had such you know credits as ZZ Top and a lot mm -hmm. of theirs, so this man worked on some serious music videos. Yeah, and it, that, that makes sense why he got Coneheads, I think. Not really sure why he got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Glad he did, because that movie's awesome. Yeah, love it. This was written by Sherry Mills, which didn't do much. I only wrote her name down, and Steve Barron also worked on the screenplay, really because this had four screenplay writers. Yeah, and I, I actually looked up the other writers besides Steve Barron. The other three aren't really working on much. They all seem to have movies in development right now, but like they've only got like three or four credits to their names. Yeah, so whatever these people are doing, they must be doing something else in the film industry because they're not doing a whole bunch of writing. Yeah. This was based on the original novel by Italian writer Carlio Colito? Coliotti? Coliotti? Yeah, 1881. Uh, yeah, I think he also came up with sort of like a picture book to this as well. So now this was the huge difference between this Pinocchio and, say, Disney's. Where they were really trying to hold to the original. They're, you know, trying very hard to keep it as close to that book as possible. Yeah, it's a concept that maybe doesn't pull off. Like, they don't pull off completely. But, like, props are trying because you're always going to be comparing, being compared to Disney. Yeah, so at least they tried. They were like, all right, we're going to go as close to the book as we can. 56 years later, after the original Pino Disney's Pinocchio, still being compared. You just can't <laughs> escape that. Nope. Starring is award winner Martin Landau as Geppetto. Right after he won his Oscar, too. Yeah. Definitely. Like, he was like, it wasn't his next project, but, like, it was very close. So it's like, you could do whatever you want in Hollywood. You just won the Oscar. And, like, he chose to do this. <laughs> He's had a wacky career. He has had some really bad movies. But right there at the late 80s and early 90s, man, did he make a comeback. 
Because when I was looking up his awards and everything else, I saw Crimes and Misdemeanors from 1989, which he was nominated for an Oscar for that one, and won a Golden Globe. And then we have Tucker, The Man in His Dream, 1988. This one, I have no idea what it was, but he was also nominated for a Golden Globe in it. That's a great movie, Tucker, The Man in His Dream. It's a really good one. I've not seen it. It's a good one. I know nothing about it. It's about the dude that invents, like, the car. So... Those are important. <laughs> yeah, it's a co- it's a fun little cute movie. We have starring Jonathan Taylor Thomas as Pinocchio, which if you don't know him from Home Improvement, I don't know how else to even identify him. <laughs> You've heard his voice in The Lion King. Yes. Uh, Simba. Yeah, that's about it. But yeah, if you didn't grow up in the 90s, you probably have no idea who this kid is. But this was during the time period where JTT, nicknamed, was taking over... Uh, high school and teenage girls lives yeah it was so much so that i would say that in the 90s jonathan taylor thomas was more famous for being jonathan taylor thomas than being the kid from home improvement yeah he (laughs) He was just a he was just a symbol of youth (laughs) he had a crazy rise and then a self-made fall when he just walked away from the business basically cold turkey yeah you know what if you that's what you want to do to it. <laughs> yeah, I was reading the story. He walked away from it because of a internet rumor that he was gay and he just had enough. And okay. it even led his agent to call him and ask him if it was true. So that's, that tells you how much his agent and him like were really connecting. <laughs> <laughs> so we also have in this movie, oh, let's see if I can pronounce this name. Genevieve Bayold? Yeah, I would guess that. Is that it? Bjold. Okay. And she was playing... <laughs> Leona? Leona, thank you. And I have no idea what any of these movies were, but she won the Best Actress in Golden Globe in 1969 for Annie of the Thousand Days. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I believe you. I'm glad you were good back then, because you are useless in this movie. Yeah, really. See, we have Udo Kerr as Lorenzini. <laughs> I listed him as from Blade. Maybe that's not fair, but I don't care. Yeah, I mean, he goes back to the Andy Warhol horror movies. He's yeah. he's in Suspiria, Blade. Dude is, a, he, I mean, he's a genre legend, really. He's mostly known for genre stuff. So he's having one, him pop up in a kid's movie is a little weird. <laughs> he's one of my favorite overactors. Oh, he's well. great. He's great. It. We also had, oh, whoa, 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 hey. A connection Baby, to last week. That's yes, a connection to Jumanji, Baby Newworth. Yes, and she was playing Valenti? Was that? Philanet? 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 Sure. I, I don't think I, I ever don't, caught her name in the I don't film. think they say it. They're just like the bumbling duo. And who's the other half of the bumbling duo? <sighs> Rob Schneider! <laughs> Who we won't even... Let's not even talk about his credits because he's <sighs> just useless. <laughs> I don't understand how the man still has a career, but whatever. Let's move on. <laughs> I'm going to play a TV spot of the trailer here, and then we're going to come back. Matt's going to break down the box art. This summer, something magical is taking shape. A legend is coming to life. It's impossible. You can't be real. Experience the adventure. And discover the magic. I'm going to be a real boy. Academy Award winner Martin Landau. Jonathan Taylor Thomas. The Adventures of Pinocchio. How about carving me a girlfriend? Brady G, now playing. Well, there's the TV spot. It certainly does look interesting, but Matt, why don't you give us the box art breakdown? All right, so I was lucky enough to find a sealed copy of this. So I'm going to talk about the box art and the stuff that came with the box art as well. Um, it's a clamshell. was completely sealed still after 20 years. Still had the factory seal on it with like the factory seal has little stamps of Turner home video on it, which is one of the releasing companies at the beginning of the movie. Um, so I know that this was like a legit original sealed copy. It's in pretty good shape. It looks like it's got smushed a little bit, but not too bad. Uh, like I said, it's a clamshell, so we got the big cover, and this one had the limited edition magic action art on it. And I had not seen this until you literally brought this over about 20 minutes ago, and it just kind of blew my mind. I'm like, wow, if I was a kid, I'd rent that. Right. No, this is so effective. So the cover is Adventures of Pinocchio, and we get Pinocchio in his, like, uh, outfit that we see him most in the film with the red jacket, red hat, and the little, uh... 
uh, shorts on and uh, the nightmare creature that Pinocchio is in this film Truly with his is. big dead eyes. Um, but when you move, it's like one of the holographic covers. When you move, Geppetto pops up next to him. And as Geppetto pops up next to him, he transforms into Jonathan Taylor Thomas. And uh, So Jonathan Taylor Thomas is sitting on his lap right there? No, he's like hugging him from behind. I wanted you to play along with that, and then we could make a horrible joke. Oh no, there's plenty, plenty still left to do. <laughs> plenty to plenty of time here to get to that. Uh, but yeah, we've got JTT. We've got the Pinocchio. He transforms from the nightmare creation to him himself, I guess. And uh, Martin Landau looking like he's you know excited to be in this movie actually, which is very. I mean, he probably got paid a lot. So <laughs> well, he's an Oscar award winner. Yeah, so he, of course he's excited. Tagline here. The classic comes to life. Okay. That's it. And it, it moves, so it goes from one side to the other on the cover here. And Martin Landau and Jonathan Taylor Thomas are top build over the title. And that's our that's our cover. It's a it's a good cover. That would attract kids to rent it. Absolutely. I, I really like this cover. I'm so glad I found this one with the magic art. How'd they do on the back here with the production stills and everything? Stills are pretty good. Uh, we get Pinocchio sitting at a pond with the reflection being Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Uh, not a shot from the film, just a promotional still. Pretty good. That's pretty good, yeah. Jonathan Taylor Thomas running through the water, which is in like the last 20 minutes of the movie. Uh, Pinocchio's nose growing, which is an iconic mm-hmm. thing for the character. So yeah, you want that in there. And then uh, a loving... This is the weird one. The yeah. loving snuggle between Geppetto and the puppet. That the looks puppet's like looking he... at him, and it looks like Martin Lando just fucked this puppet. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> that's not the still you want to... Nope. <laughs> this is this is them in bed smoking a cigarette after <laughs> oh. a night of passion. I think I think uh, Martin Lando sits on his face and has a no! light on him. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh. That joke had to be made. It's had too to easy. There, there's also a joke probably to be made with getting wood, but I'm going to leave that alone because it's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> On the side here, we get the still separated from the front cover. Uh, at the bottom underneath the title, we get Pinocchio as the puppet, and at the top we get Martin Landau and Jonathan Taylor Thomas as a boy. It is listed as a family movie. Oh, which, yes. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. I don't think it, it's like quite an adventure film or anything like that. It's a family movie. Dolby Surround, VHS. Oh, now they had to start saying VHS because DVDs were starting to pop oh, up. Oh, good point, yes. And uh, closed captioned. So how's our synopsis on the bag? Let's judge it. Here's our synopsis. Millions of people have fallen in love with Pinocchio, the classic story of a rambunctious puppet who longs to be a boy. His inspiring tale about the power of believing in dreams has enchanted families for generations. Now, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, Home Improvement, Academy Award winner Martin Landau, Ed Wood, and the Jim Henson Creature Shop's magical special effects team up to bring this classic to life. In this spectacular live-action adventure, the lovable and mischievous puppet Pinocchio searches for a way to become a real boy in a world of rules he doesn't understand. Along the way, he encounters a talkative cricket who teaches Pinocchio what a miracle really is and helps the puppet achieve his dream and find his way back to Geppetto. A timeless story which has carved an honored peep place for itself in the hearts of millions. The Adventures of Pinocchio also features original music and lyrics by legendary recording artist and Grammy Award winner Stevie Wonder. I don't remember any of his songs. (laughs) Uh, The Adventures of Pinocchio is what every child and puppet dreamed it could be. An amazing adventure in a world without strings. Man, they got Stevie Wonder on this? I don't remember any of his songs. They must no. not. Yeah, he probably slapped them together. He would just pay check. We <laughs> get <laughs> your credit block at the bottom, and then all the studios that we talked about at the beginning. It's not bad synopsis. I mean, they, they do a good job of actually more selling the timeless tale of Pinocchio right. than they do their movie. Yeah, because the movie spends a long time before we get the sort of like the classic cliff notes that we expect from a Pinocchio movie. It takes a long time of him just walking around. Yeah, uh, t- but they sell it. I think this is a. I think if I picked up this tape, I would end up renting it. You know, for this being a running time of ninety four minutes, it's kind of incredible how much stuff they jam into this movie. Oh yeah. Because what you guys don't know is behind the scenes here. I wrote a full synopsis of this movie, and that was hard. We're not going to read that for you. Yeah. But it's just for us. That was really hard to do. There's a lot going on. 
Yeah, a lot goes on, and, re- and I specifically you know, mentioned the phrase Cliff Notes version because the last really 20 minutes packs in all the things you expect, yes. the donkeys, the whale, um, and him turning into a real boy. That's all slammed into the end of the movie. So we, there's just so much going on here. Yeah, let's play you a little thing here, and we're going to come back and then break down that film. And now, our feature presentation. Here's our breakdown of it, and we're going to change it up. We typically go through scene through scene, but we're going to we're going to speed it up a little bit by paying attention to the scenes that really stuck out in our mind for good or worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and this way too, you know, if you've seen the movie already, you don't need to know everything that happens in it. Let's just let's cut down to like the good stuff. Let's cut down to what why yeah. we talked about this one, like why we picked this movie. One, when I started watching this with Sarah, and he's carving the the heart into the wood and everything. Mm-hmm. I was like, wait, who's this for? I had no idea who. Yeah. yeah there's what? no way to know who. If you've never read the book, you don't even know who Leona is. No. So you see him carving this L and you don't find, you don't see Leona until way later into the movie when Pinocchio is running rampant in the city. You don't, you don't see her then, until then. And then they're not together. So you're like, who, who was this then? Yeah. And then it's, it's very s- vague. No. Yeah, and then the tree struck by lightning and I was trying to figure out, I was like, Okay, is this a world of magic? Or what, what is this? Why did the lightning strike to give it? I kind of just let that go out of my mind. But then we have time pass. He comes back, and the the log kind of, like, refuses to let him pass him up. Right, yeah. So he's got to pick up this magic log that, of course, is, you know, it's a piece of wood now, but it has the, the G and L still yeah. on it, of course. And I don't think he noticed that. Yeah, he, like, doesn't even notice it right He away. carves the entire... Because he brings it home and then carves Pinocchio. How did he not notice that? And he's like, and he's like, uh, when he picks up the wood, he's just like, I guess this piece won't let me leave until I take it. Yeah, the movie doesn't <laughs> set up. Like, is this a world of magic? Like, if he would have said, like, oh, the magic, you know, like, somehow established to us that this is a world of magic. Because really it just throws us in what seems to be a very normal world. And it also, it has, we start with voiceover. Which is uh, not Jiminy Cricket. He's Pepe in Pepe, this version. Yeah. But it's Jiminy Cricket. Pepe is narrating. We, he doesn't come into the movie until about halfway. No. So we don't know who the hell is narrating this movie until halfway through when we hear the voice again. We're like, oh, okay, that character. But he doesn't say, hey, I'm Pepe. Here's the story of Pinocchio. By the way, I'm a cricket. Nothing. No. Nothing. He's just like, sometimes magic has a way of finding its way into your home. Okay. That's it. <laughs> That's like, it. That's I, I all guess, we get. All right. And he carves Pinocchio. He takes a bath with all of his clothes on. All of his clothes on, which I'm assuming is because this is a kid's movie. But yeah. still, like, why? <laughs> Don't take a bath then. Well, Have him do something else. Have him be, like, cleaning or something. Yeah, so he goes, in the, he goes in the bathtub. Pinocchio comes to life. You know, he's carved. And he's already the nightmare creation that we have established yes. <laughs> mention mention what you mentioned to me earlier about the transformation oh so yeah so he comes to life and the first thing that happens is he jumps down he's like a detached from his strings he reaches his arms out for geppetto and he's and the shot is low it's at like it's at pinocchio's like chest level so he has his arms reached out and he's coming towards the screen and it is straight out of like a fucking horror movie Yes, yeah. he's like Papa, Papa. I'm like, that's like some pet cemetery shit right there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he ends up murdering Geppetto and then turning Geppetto into the puppet. Right, like Who's starts carving his down? skin and like <laughs> makes like a puppet out of his bones or something. That's what I expected to happen here. But no, he jumps in the bathtub, which is weird, and would get wood rot. Like, don't do that, Pinocchio. You're fucking yourself up for life here. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this must be magical wood that yeah. we don't know about because yeah, that's that's not a good thing to do i didn't see pinocchio puts any type of like gloss or lacquer on him to protect him from am i going too far <laughs> <laughs> right right St- i'm i have these questions i need to know why is pinocchio not rotting apart when he just cut the, the bathtub yeah. seed just do it like uh but there is there is something that i think is worth mentioning now the puppetry is amazing yes on uh, pinocchio jim henson's creature shop knocks it out of the park here it's alive. That fucking thing is real, which is terrifying because it's so ungodly. But it, it's real. 
The problem in this is not the puppetry work. The problem in this whole movie isn't even the stop motion. Some of it stop motion is a little creepy, like they do with the the Muppets, like when they show them walking and you right, see their right. stick legs. That's a little creepy. The true problem in this movie is the 1996 CG face that they put on this puppet. Oh my god! Which they don't use that often. But the eyes. It's just, yeah, it's sometimes. Something's unsettling about those eyes. What's what's worth mentioning for the CGI, really, is Jiminy fucking Cricket Pepe. Oh, we'll get to that. Oh, but I, I, uh, a responsible comparison would be the monkeys in Jumanji that we just saw. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Both from so, 1996, so maybe that's what we were just working with at that time. <laughs> yeah, this is a problem, 1996 CG. But let's get into... Uh, I got another problem with this world as a whole. Like I said before, they don't establish that it's a magic world. Mm-hmm. Now, when Pinocchio chases the pigeon out of the window and he's running through the streets as naked Pinocchio... Naked Pinocchio, yes. Yeah. He's running through these streets. Nobody freaks out. None. Not a, not. A, everybody's like, oh, look at that. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's more like, hey, that's strange. Don't see that every day. Go about my business. Yeah, like, I'm going to go back to buying apples from this cart now. Like, uh, what? <laughs> no, it's a it's a living puppet. That's a problem. I, I That reminded me, though, this is also a period piece. This is taking place in some 1800s time. I assume around 1880 because w- that's when, when the, book the book was, was written. Out. The art design and the set decoration is great it's very good for like a time period thing they don't give you an actual time like text they don't have it pop up on screen yeah they they show you they they show instead of tell and that's good which i like i loved it and there's a lot of things in this movie that are good that we'll get into in the behind the scenes but going about this world it sets it up so well but then you got a creepy ass naked puppet walking (laughs) around and no one freaks out in fact they bump into, like, all the main characters in this street. They yes. introduce a lot of these main characters immediately. Yes. Pinocchio basically gets clothes. Thank God. From <laughs> so if I had to look at that naked thing running around the city anymore, I'd probably, like, have to turn it off. <laughs> yeah, from, uh, let's see, Leona? Yeah, Leona has, like, clothes drying. And she, he get when he falls down, he falls into the clothes. She's like, I gotta wash these again. And they put he puts on some of the clothes, and she's just like... Oh, Geppetto, your little puppet got out. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a living... Why are you freaking out? Like, I was screaming at the movie at this time, watching it with Sarah. And she's like, I don't understand. I guess it's a world of magic. I'm like, they never set that up. Yeah, this is the only magic until later with the donkeys. This is the only magic in this world. Yeah. Is this living puppet. And no one is freaking out. I just wonder, you know, there's no... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this is the reason. There's no communication. There's no internet. There's no phones. Maybe people are just like, mm, the other side of the world, this is already happening. It just got here now, finally. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I was like, I don't know. But through the streets, we are introduced to the three bad characters. Yes. We have the whatever the girl's name is and Rob Schneider's name. I don't Baby know. Baby Newerth and Rob Schneider. Yeah, I'm not going to call yeah. them by their names in this because they don't in the movie. No, they don't. The <laughs> one's a fox. One's a dog. Later on, yeah. 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 No, I mean, that's kind of like what they're trying to... Visually, if you look at them... Yeah, yeah, because he's got like the red unibrow and shit. Yeah. Yeah, and he's just purely annoying. I don't know why. He's like the dumb comic relief in this. Both of these are. But I feel like she's literally carrying him through every scene. Yes. That's pretty much every actor. No, like, Baby New Earth is a great actress. Like, she's, you know, she's a Tony-winning actress, I think. So she is one... For her acting. Well, she's, and she is carrying, yeah. picking up and carrying that little piece of shit Rob Schneider through this movie. Yes. <laughs> but they also introduce uh, Warren Zini, which is played by Udo Kerr, and they immediately, when you look at him, you're like, yeah, could you make him look any more evil? He right. even has the like wax mustache, yeah. right? He looks like Captain Hook. Yes. That's what they're kind of going for. They're I think, not playing here. around with it. But I love his like over the top ornate costume. Oh, it's so it, funny. Yeah. <laughs> I can listen to that man talk about almost anything. I would love if he just read the dictionary. Yeah, because no. Because you know that would make it entertaining. Boys do like bugs, bugs, don't they? They like to tease them and twist them. Please, and... Lorazzini. Shh. Shh. Oh. Name your prize. 
is not for sale. Trepetto. Stay. Everything is for Stay. sale. Not him. Not at any price. Stay, bug. His creepy, like, German accent yeah. voice is just so good. So, yeah, he meets Pinocchio, and he's like, I must have this. <laughs> like, that's, like, it's just this whole thing for the rest of the movie. And then, like, Baby Newirth and Rob Schneider are just like, we'll get him for you. But they don't They do not do shit. Like, they don't do anything. Yeah, they pretty much just go into the city. And then it starts our adventure when these three walk off from this. And then it's kind of like, oh, they're trying to make... Pinocchio and Geppetto grow together, but really, you kind of just, in my mind, I kind of blanked out for a second and then woke back up when he's going to, with the kids to school. Yeah, but he, him and Geppetto really don't do anything. They mm-hmm. don't. They just, like, they are walking together and through the town, and everybody's like, is this your son? And he's like, no, it's a puppet. And he's like, Ama-. and then somebody's like, oh, is, did you make this? And he's like, maybe. Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't get it. Like, it goes through, like, another solid 10, 12 minutes, I think, could be cut down. Because I remember uh, Warren Zini tries to buy the puppet. Geppetto refuses. Then we carry on. Pinocchio runs away, and right. then, boom, he gets introduced to the kids. In or, the no, school. he follows the kids to school. Right. And then they start a fight with him because those little shits are mean to Pinocchio. Yeah, yeah. They punch they're, him in the face. They're like, Woody, punch him. Yeah, and then he gets hurt, and I was like, good. And then Pinocchio punches him in the face. I was like, good. Yeah, he clocks him. He knocks him, like, <laughs> knocks him down. Yeah, I was like, yeah, Pinocchio. Uh, yeah. Pinocchio doesn't fuck around. But, of course, he gets in trouble because the teacher walks up. And this is an iconic scene, and I believe this scene right here in the movie. This was good. They did a really good job with this. Oh, yeah. This was obviously, this was a big, probably selling point of the script Mm -hmm. here when he lies and the nose grows. Yeah, the nose looked good because it's practical. Yeah. I don't know how they did that, and I didn't see any strings in that. Yeah, it looks, it's it's amazing. I wonder if it's just some sort of, like, rubber and they were just, like, filling with air or something. I don't know, but it looks great. And also the teacher. I don't know who that actor is, but he, for some reason, I really liked him as that arrogant sounding teacher he did a really good job i i I wasn't paying enough attention to him but i will have to go back and watch him in in that again uh because like like i said i like this scene a lot too well i think they gave him like i mean i obviously don't know but i bet if i was the director on scene or the first director and they were doing this the way he was talking and acting I bet they gave him just a little bit more screen time because they're like wow this This guy's good this guy's good (laughs) yeah and there there was he like sneezes in his face you know when his nose mm-hmm. grows and he sneezes and the sawdust comes out so that was sawdust yeah because we were sarah and i were like that's sawdust right yeah I'm like, yeah it's I not think it had to be yeah it's not like snot or anything he's like sneezes not sawdust but uh, this reminded me of something i liked early on when geppetto is still carving pinocchio and he's not fully formed yet he just has like a knot for a mouth and at one point the cat goes up to like the head that's not fully done yet and he blows the air out of the mouth and like the sawdust comes out in and oh. of like his wo- like the wood piece so like the cat is just starting to kind of fuck with the wood hunk that's gonna be his head and he goes within the like wood comes out and I, that very specific moment is something that you could and I, it is in the trailer you could put in the trailer and that makes a kid want to see that instantly i think because you're immediately conveying like the magic of the movie like he's not oh, even yeah. done yet, and he's he's already can breathe or whatever. Like I I don't know. That was a that was a selling point for yeah, me. Yeah, it didn't stick out to me, but that's kind of interesting. What does stick out to you, and what sticks it's out like to me? It's like a little yeah. moment. Yeah, like that's not something I'm gonna put in the museum, but it's just like a cool thing that I thought I like. The, it was a good filmmaking touch to have that early on in the film, yeah, and then we know he can do that later when he yeah. sneezes. So, so when he's he. he you know, I was telling the teacher why, you know, like, I'm sorry I'm doing this, and he's shrinking the nose and everything. I thought for a second, I go, oh, you know what? I bet he invites Pinocchio back into the classroom, and they can have it, and that's how he gets to meet these kids, and that's how they go to Funland. No. That, like, that teacher done. commits, get out. Done. That's it. And then this is where he uh, destroys the bakery. Yes, which was, right after. Which was a... Uh, I get it. I know why it's there. But, like... I don't know, he destroys a bakery, and, like, they're like, oh, you gotta pay for all this damage or whatever. And he's like, I can't pay for it. Geppetto can't pay for it. But then they're, like, gonna get arrested. 
Yeah, which Geppetto. I think is a bit much. <laughs> uh, they don't mess around in 1880. <laughs> so when he he messes up this whole place and he's eating all these baked goods, where does the food go? Yeah, and like, are are his poop sticks? Like what? <laughs> like, I don't know. If if his sneezes, like if his snot is sawdust, what is his poop? Oh, man, questions. Just need... bark, pieces of tree bark or something. <laughs> Should we t- tweet at Bob <laughs> Shea and see if we can get this answer? What? Yeah, like he, he, he's eating, he's eating human food. So what does it turn into in this wooden system that he has? We have to figure this out. At Bob Shea, at the real Bob Shea, <laughs> Bob <laughs> Shea official in the, in the new adventures of Pinocchio when he eats the pastries. What does his poop look like? <laughs> can we? What is it? One hundred forty-four characters. Can we fit I think this it's in? more now. You could do 260 or something like that. Oh now. my gosh. We I were, have so many questions. Let's I have, do it. I have so many more characters than I <laughs> We're just going to hit Bob Shea off. <laughs> where, where does it go? What does it do? What does it look like? So Geppetto gets arrested and Pinocchio then runs home because he's all sad. Yeah. And he meets the CG garbage fire <laughs> that is Pepe. Pepe. Yeah. Uh, when Pepe is. We were talking about this earlier. Is a combination of stop motion, CG, and animatronic. But the stop motion is great. Yes, yeah. And what they do over the stop motion, the stop motion is very almost like Henry Selleck, like James and the Giant Peach or Nightmare mm-hmm. Before Christmas. It's great. But what they stupidly do is they put a CG blur around the the stop motion, which just, like, it hurts your eyes. I... <laughs> Pepe, the entire thing. I, <laughs> I can't believe they went to print with this or whatever you'd call it. You know, in their final draft. If you have Jim Henson working for you, why don't you just use some type of puppet? Exactly. Like, a, like a, we we were talking about when we were talking about Flight of the Navigator. Why can't we have like a little puck type? Yeah. Cricket. What? Why? Why not? Why do you have this? Is awful. Yeah. This is the worst part of the movie, and it dates it. And this is. Like, if you go through an entire montage of awful CG, Pepe deserves to be in it. It's terrible. Right next to the monkeys from Jumanji. <laughs> right next to it. Like, when you're in that 1996 region, these belong together. <laughs> God, it's so bad, and I had a hard time watching it. I, I felt uncomfortable. It's yeah. so weird to get uncomfortable from bad CG. Well, they would do this thing where it, when he would talk to Pinocchio, he would, like, climb on his nose. So you'd get the fisheye lens over him talking. So just his CG bug eyes are your entire TV screen, and it is just disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> it, it just hurts your eyes to look at and is horrifying. <laughs> I hate this scene. I hate it. And I hate everything about Pepe in this movie. At th- like, at this point, just cut him out. What is the point? What, why he is he He doesn't teach this? him how to be a real boy. He doesn't, like, the back of the box says he teaches him about miracles. He doesn't do anything. What? Yeah. He just shows up and is like, yo, what are you going to do now, Pinocchio? All right, bye. Yeah, it's, at least he should have been like, if you do the right thing, maybe you can turn into a real boy. No, he just says a bunch of garbly gook and then, like, bounces around this CG crap. And yeah. Like, Ugh. Yeah, with this little CG blur behind him or whatever. Yeah. But this leads to, what's his name? Le- Leonetti? What the fuck is his name? Le- Lorenzini. <laughs> Lorenzini? Pick a real name, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> These Lauren- Italians and their <laughs> and their names, their uh, ornate names. <laughs> like Lorenzini, it basically acquires Pinocchio. He's like, yeah. "I'll pay for the thing, Geppetto, if you let me have Pinocchio." And Geppetto gives him two other puppets and Pinocchio. But this then translate because it, you know Geppetto eventually just they kind of really elongate this out but really it just gets to Lorenzini having Pinocchio be the star of his play and that play was awesome yeah no like the play with the fire breathing dragon and everything I would have loved that as a kid (laughs) yeah because Lorenzini's eating peppers and apparently can breathe fire so we get another I guess form of magic there which I wrote in my notes (laughs) Lorenzini's shits must be titanic level awful we're really concerned about the bodily functions of these characters in this film. <laughs> New line, I am concerned. <laughs> <laughs> that man's red ring of death must be Woo! awful. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> then another. So the play's going great. 
but then Pinocchio opens his mouth to sing, and I was like, ugh. Yeah. Ugh. And we looked it up. It's Brian May from Queen who is singing that, and they he has pitched his voice to sound like a little boy. Yeah, not a good idea. <laughs> Why don't we just get a little boy to sing the song? Yeah. But, well, it's so unmemorable. It, Who cares, it, though? Like, Isn't that what they did in Lion King? Like, we get it. JTT can't sing. So you get someone else right. to sing the song. Right. Why do you have to get a full-grown man to do it and then change his voice? That yeah. just seems like a lot of work. Yeah. Like, a lot of unnecessary work. Yeah, I don't know. Um, for one scene that's, like, the the visuals of, like, the, the puppet and, like, interacting with these, with the string puppets, with the puppeteers, like, doing the string rods over the stage, him interacting with that and the dragon is cool. But, like, once it gets to the point of the song, the song is so unmemorable and I could really care less about what he's singing about. Don't even know what it Waste was. Waste of time. Don't even, don't even do it. Don't even have him sing. <laughs> I just know the point of the scene was he finds out Warren Zini is using him. He saves the dolls that Geppetto carved. He runs away, and then I kind of lose the film for a while until they get to the fun land. What happens? Nothing. Nothing. He gets away. He wants to interact with Geppetto or whatever, but he's off doing some. He's off looking for him. Yeah. So they never connect, and Geppetto has his moment where at sea with Leona, where we finally find out like that that was the L he was carving. We had no idea until that moment. Yeah. Now, is my memory right? So she married his brother? Right. Which we find out in that scene. What happens? Does his brother die and she's now single? Who knows? They don't explain it. They don't explain it. They don't explain it. Because I feel like there's a lot of scenes in this that drag. And the pacing in this movie needs help because there's too much going on. It's front-loaded. Yes. Very front-loaded. Well, it's front-loaded and then back-loaded. Yeah. So yeah. I, I feel like it's so uneven with these acts, with Act 1 being the introduction to everyone. Act 2 just really drags. It's walking around. That's all it is. It's yeah. just walking around. So we'll just skip all of it and get to <laughs> him. He, The boys are going, the kids from the class. Are now his friend, I guess. I guess. Because they're like, hey, Woody, hey, come Woody. on with us. Yeah, and when did the, I guess the Woody nickname came from them saying he's made out of wood? I don't know. Yeah, he calls him Woody when okay. he punches him, yeah. All right, so they, they end up getting on his carriage that's taking them to a land where boys can do anything. Yeah. And I looked up the name of this, Terra Magica. Okay. I don't remember that being called that. Well, the only thing I remember hearing that in is in the computer game video that I watched. Oh, yes. There's a 1996 PC game of this. We'll go into it in the behind the scenes. But that was in there? Yeah. The Terra Magica is at the is like the the thing he has to solve with the other puppets. In one right. of the first, you know, first games of that game, he has to solve the name of this, and mm-hmm. that's where it is. That's the only time I've ever heard of it, though. I didn't hear it in the movie once. No, I mean, if it was in the movie, I don't remember because this was definitely during the part of the movie where I was just kind of like, "Can okay, let's get going. But they do. Once we get to Fun World, I'm going to call it that. <laughs> Once they get to it. They're Once all, they get know, to Fun Land. They, they're greeted by a drag queen at the front, which threw me for a loop. I was like, wait, what? That's when I came back into the movie, too. And I go, why is there a drag queen in the front of this boys club? Yeah. Like, what? Yeah, very strange. Also, yeah. like... Um, I think the only thing I th- the only thing that I'm remembering now that we missed was that there's a scene where Bebe Newirth and Rob Schneider try to convince Pinocchio that if they give him money, that he'll turn into a real boy. And that that's another Jiminy Cricket scene where he shows up and he's like, "That's not how that works." And I then don't he remember leaves. that at all. It's like a quick scene. It's useless. He has to like bury the money and they mm-hmm. just dig it up. Yeah, because I put my phone away. I put it in the kitchen so I would not touch it. So this was literally my mind just going, nope. <laughs> See, I, wa- I watched this movie in bed <laughs> before I went to bed, which Ooh. was probably not a good idea. No, that's not I could have had nightmares. So I was I was distraction-free. But, yeah, that middle section slows to a crawl. So, like, I, I wasn't distracted, but, like, I can't tell you too much about what happens. Yeah, when they're in this, this fun land, those kids fucking shoot Pinocchio. Yeah, they, they shoot commit, holes in him. They commit a crime on him, like and a deadly crime. Like he could die. <laughs> like, yeah, and they don't care. <laughs> no, they're just like, ha ha, he's got holes in him, and doesn't he drink? Oh no! So they end up going on the roller coaster, which I I get why they did the roller coaster. They're trying to make it more 
present. Yeah, but it's this very is much also like part of the problem, and I'll get into and in what I think about the movie later on. Like where it's kind of like uneven. But anyway, they drink the magic water, and then they start to turn into jackasses because that's what they're acting like. And holy crap, when they shape shift. I was like, not cool movie. <laughs> it's horrifying. No, it was terrible. Uh, it reminds me of like that MTV 80s, 90s style like animation things where like heads shift into things. Like, Bill Plimpton and things like that. But, Morphing. Yeah. yeah. Morphing was really big. Yeah, it was. I miss that. I wish there was more morphing. I don't, <laughs> I don't miss this morphing. <laughs> well, yeah, this this morphing is terrifying. Yeah. It's it's very it's very teeth loaded morphing, mm-hmm. like because they're turning into jackasses, so obviously big teeth. But like when they transform, the first thing that goes is their mouth, and it's yeah. just giant teeth. Anything with just giant teeth is terrifying. <laughs> yeah, I give the animators credit. It looks convincing in a way, but it's terrifying. Like. How did kids not... I mean, how did parents not complain about this when it was coming out? Uh, the 90s kids were tough. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> it's not like today. 90s kids could handle anything. <laughs> well, especially when it came to CG, because they saw the worst of yeah. the worst. Yeah. So, because Pinocchio's got holes in him, he doesn't fully shapeshift into a wooden donkey. He just gets the wooden ears. But he gets the wooden ears. And when Lorenzini... Or one of his goons discover that Pinocchio hasn't fully turned. They grab his ears, and Pinocchio just... His ears get ripped off. Yeah, cracks them off. And Sarah gasped when this happened. She's like, <gasps> And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn. Like, they broke Pinocchio. Like, they <laughs> cracked his ears off his fucking head. And they don't fix it later on. He's no. walking around the rest of the film with, with cracked-ass ears. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, thank uh, well, God he turns into a real boy. <laughs> and then he gets into the hole. He escapes, runs to the other boys. They laugh at him, but eventually, I guess, he convinces them. And they kick Lorenzini into the sea? Well, they kick him into the the pond that leads from the ride. So, like, it, it, yeah. so like there's a waterfall portion of the ride, and that's where they drink the water and turn into donkeys. And then there's, like, a pond that it leads to. They kick him into the pond. But we find out that he like crawls out of the pond into the sea somehow so it must lead into the sea so uh, that's where i was like one of my notes is like so how does this magic water work like what's the cutoff where's the cutoff (laughs) i mean is there some type of magical field that warren zini created in this fun world i don't know bob shea at bob shea (laughs) (laughs) how does the magic water work (laughs) (laughs) so yeah, he, he eventually turns into a sea monster, the large demonic whale, as yeah. it's described in the book. Yes, so he is the whale. They uh, It shows Geppetto finding uh, Pinocchio's hat at some time, and then he... He, he goes out like, to sea yeah, and he looks for him. He goes rows to out to sea. But he gets eaten by the demonic yeah. uh, whale, which Pinocchio also does as well. Yes. So, so then they meet mm-hmm. inside the whale, and what do they do to get out? I don't remember, except... I don't remember what they say inside of that entire in in the whale's belly at all. I just remember he starts lying like I hated I hate you as my father. I hope you're never my father and his his nose grows. Oh, his nose grows and it like doesn't it like tickle the uvula and then he he sneezes or whatever or it jams the throat. Either way they get thrown out. Yeah. At this point I wanted the movie over. I really did. See, I was this whole section I was into. This could have been longer for me. But it should have been at a different point. But that was it the problem. The this, middle killed this. Yeah, the middle killed this because this is my favorite part of the movie. Is the the fun land, f- moment they arrive at Funland through the whale is my favorite chunk of this movie. And it's packed into like the last 15 minutes yes. of the film. Yes, this is all jam packed in. This yeah. all happens very fast. So they get out, they kill the whale. I guess no, this no, kills no. Him. I don't think they kill the whale. The, the whale swims away to the bottom of the sea. I thought he sunk. I just thought, I thought he, he like, like choked left. and sunk or something. Oh, maybe he just yeah. Because no, no, no. when I was reading the synopsis, it said he ends up floating to the bottom of the sea, and I was like, wait, does that is he dead or did he swim? <laughs> I don't. Whatever. Whatever. Who cares? Who cares? I don't care. It's oh, that scene's over, and then basically. This is the point because he saves Geppetto, he becomes a real boy. Yeah, his tear drops out when he's hugging Geppetto, hits the heart that was carved in that somehow I guess Geppetto forgot about. Yeah. Even though he carved the damn puppet. Yeah. And then it turns him into JTT. Yeah. 
And we get maybe like five minutes, not even, like maybe three minutes of JTT. All of that's in the trailer. <laughs> yes. The running on the beach, the handing of Geppetto a, a new log and saying, make me a girlfriend. All of it. All of it's in the freaking trailer. All of it's in the trailer. That's the whole end of the movie, kids. So. And you know that's just because he was so popular. They had to put his face they in the trailer. had to put his face in it as much as good. So. Yeah. So. And by the way. JTT doesn't need anyone at this time period to carve him a girlfriend. He's JTT. You're JTT. <laughs> you could get whatever you want. Why do you want a piece of wood to fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, man. Like, yeah. It's, oh, and they got married, right? And Yeah, and then just somehow, magically, all the kids are back to normal. Yeah, no more And uh, Leona and Geppetto just get married. Yeah, and then the two, the, two, <laughs> the two goons are, what, a fox and a, a dog or yeah. whatever? And yeah. Yeah, it's credits. It's credits roll. Yeah. That's it. We're done with the movie. We've breeze uh, through that like last chunk. Uh, so the first twenty minutes of this movie feel like twenty minutes. The last twenty minutes feel like twenty minutes, and the middle forty feel like an hour. Yeah, it's too long. The middle is too long. You could cut this bad boy down to about eighty-five minutes, and it would be a much better film. I'll, uh, I don't know if I don't know if this one would actually serve from being cut necessarily, as restructured where the third act should. Like the second act should just be Funland, and the third act should just be the whale. Yeah, that's at that point. Like Like it needs to be completely restructured. Yeah, the cut needs to happen in the middle on on just a lot of crap that doesn't matter, and maybe cut a lot of the Pepe. Cut Pepe. Fuck Pepe. Why get rid of that piece of shit? Like (laughs) he's useless. He's he's so unmem. Other than the terrible CGI, which you can't forget, he's so unmemorable for what he does in this movie. He's useless as a character. But you know, the only reason they put him in there is if they didn't have him in there, people would be like, "Where's Jiminy Cricket?" You know, like. (laughs) And this was before the internet age, so probably there people would be like, "I can't believe they got rid of Jiminy Cricket." Yeah. Like, no, no, Pepe was in the original one. Disney just didn't want to use that many Italian names. Right, right. And Pepe was way too close to being Mexican. Yeah, so they like, yeah. And we all know that Walt Disney hated anybody that wasn't white. <gasps> what? Look that up. <laughs> Walt Disney was a piece of shit. Um, <laughs> fuck well, that guy. A great artist. A piece of shit. <laughs> or a great visionary. Piece of shit person. Piece of shit. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, that's it. Okay, here's a scene right here. We're going to let you listen to the piece of shit, Pepe. I... Are you a termite? Oh, please. So you're not going to eat me? Thanks for the offer, but I'm on a low-wood diet. <laughs> Let me introduce myself. The name is... Pugnacio <laughs> Elecutio P. Elegante. Give me a P, an E, a P, an E. Put them all together and call me... Pepe! Pepe? You don't like it? Yeah, it's okay. I'm very sensitive, you know. No, it's it's fine. We can't all be called Pinocchio. Now listen to me. I'm here because you are one fatomal little puppet. Your papa's in jail. You're all alone. You trounced me in the alley. And I'm here to see that we get our friendship back on track right this very second. Well, Matt, what was your overall opinion of this? Yeah, overall... I, I thought this movie was cute. I liked this movie. It's it's not like I loved this movie, but I, I haven't seen it in 20 years. And I'll, ta- I'll tell you my story about how I saw it in the behind the scenes in a minute here. But uh, I haven't seen this in 20 years and knew nothing about it, didn't remember anything about it. I just knew I had seen it once. I liked it. I thought it was cute. I don't think it's great. I think Pinocchio is terrifying, but if your kid could get over that fact that he's terrifying to look at, it'd be a it'd be a cute movie to show your kids. Mine was a little harsher than yours. I think this story's been told, so why are we telling it again? One, I get mm-hmm. it's been 50-something years since the original Disney. I should stop saying the original Disney. Disney's version. <laughs> yeah, right. The most memorable version or whatever. Don't do that because you'll always be compared to it. Change it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think where you did the roller coaster there... Make the movie modern day, or put the put it in some other magical world. Don't do what Disney did. I kind of commend that you wanted to go by the original book, but Disney ruined that. They're too good. Yeah, what I mean, like the roller coaster reminds me and thinks, you know, he's wood and it's in the 1800s. They should have did like a steampunk version. That, Anything but know, the original. Yeah, that's, that's what, what they should have done. Because Disney did the original with its own twist. Mm. 
this story of like wanting to become human, a timepiece period, telling this, seen it. Yeah. We don't need it. It's dry. Kids aren't dumb. They probably looked at this. The reason this didn't do well, even with a very popular Jonathan Taylor Thomas, was the sheer fact that they looked at it and they're like, Pinocchio, seen it. Right. What else is out? Well, they probably, I feel like this one, they went and saw, but didn't have like any kind of word of mouth or legs. Not, you know? a, not a ton. Only $15 million in the USA. I mean, that's not I guess, good. yeah, they didn't bring them in, and they marketed the hell out of this movie. Yes. When we'll go into that in behind the scenes, there were more posters in this than we knew what to do with. Right. <laughs> so they marketed it, but they yeah, they just didn't connect and I can see what you're saying and I don't disagree with you actually. Like I'm not yeah. I'm not bending out my opinion here. I just I don't disagree. I just am like take it as it is and I'm just like it's cute. It suffices. <laughs> I think what this also suffers from with it's not bad enough to be so bad it's good. It's not really good. It is in that terrible spot way in the middle. Yeah, middling movie. And that's why this probably just gets forgotten in a 90s movie. Yeah. Because I've never heard anyone bitch about the CG of Pepe in this, and it should be there. (laughs) Not enough people care about this movie, yeah. There you go. And uh, that's that's the truth. I, I lean more towards thinking it's good. There's too much good. Yeah. Mixed with... An idea we've seen plenty of times, and just bad CG. Yeah, that's that's the best way to sum that one up. <laughs> so, you want to go into the behind the scenes here? Yeah, let's do it. So, before we kind of start going down the list, I do want to talk about how I came to see this movie, and then talk about some of the stuff that is in the box with the, with the movie. Oh, I'm dropping things everywhere. Okay, so, I actually saw this movie when it first came out, 1996. I was six years old. What they did for promoting this movie was, at the time, my dad worked for Famous Amos Cookies. And they had set up a screening for the employees of Famous Amos because this has a lot of food tie-ins. And I'll get to that in a second with the stuff that's in here. So they, uh, Famous Amos must have been you know, a sponsor or something like that. But they set up for employees up in Schaumburg in the suburbs, early screening of this movie for all the employees. That's so, Schaumburg, Illinois, for all of you yeah, outside of yeah, Chicago. Yeah. Schaumburg, Illinois, up in the suburbs. And the theater that they showed it in was in the mall, which is not there anymore. So, just fun fact. Mm-hmm. We went to see the movie. It was obviously for everybody to bring their families. So, it was my family and all these other famous Amos workers' families seeing this film. And one of the things they did, they had giveaways. And I got a Pinocchio puppet. I don't know where it is, but I still have it. So maybe in a future episode, he can be our co-host if I can find him. But I couldn't find him before this episode, which I'm so mad about. Oh, my. But it is a full-size, like I'm doing from like my stomach to my head, full-size puppet of Pinocchio. Do you think that's like stuffed in your parents' basement? or? It's attic? in the basement. That's why I didn't find it. Because it's somewhere in a box in a tote labeled like... Matthew's Toys in the basement somewhere. I gotta find it. Oh, though. wow. But I, they did giveaways for the kids, and I got one of the puppets at the screening. Because there's no way I would buy any merchandise from this movie, because I didn't really remember it after seeing it. Well, um, no kid did. <laughs> but I did get that at yeah. that screening. They screened the movie early, and it was this big press thing, and there was, everywhere you went in the theater, there were standees and posters for this movie, different ones, and things like that. So they must have had some tie-in with famous Amos, but we also know they had tie-ins for Hormel Foods because the outer wrapper that this sealed one is, uh, that was in has a thing like $5 mail-in refund for like turn in by 1997 for some Hormel foods like including spam and corned beef hash and things like that. Oh and it also has a Best Buy sticker on it from 1999 so they didn't even sell it at Best Buy either. Still ended up floating around at a Goodwill. So I've got inside the tape there was there's this coupon in the save five dollars on Hormel foods uh, that expires one year from when this came out in 1997. There's also a rebate for the PC game. Okay which we'll talk about in a second. And then something for TCB Treats, $2 off. I don't know Uh what that is. But they had a lot of food tie-ins for this. I just see spam, and I'm like, woo, could have saved me some money on spam. (laughs) I used to eat that in college, son. I tried it for the first time in college, and I actually liked it. 
It's not bad. It's not actually. bad. It gets you gets you by for whatever what type of meat it is. Uh, s- s- ham. Sure. <laughs> Does the trick? No, but that that's great. That's a blast from the past nostalgia right there. Yeah, All you don't see times. these little ads in movies anymore. Like, it, I opened up the tape and these little papers fell all over me Yeah, <laughs> like for the game and for this. Let's get into some of these other behind the scenes here. Did you know JTT hates it when you call him JTT? I didn't know that. That's no, new, but I'm going to fucking do it even more now, JTT. Yeah. You're mine. <laughs> Steve Barron and Jim Henson tried to get Disney to make this movie in the late 80s, but Disney said no repeatedly. So what they did was they changed up, well, after Jim Henson died, Baron changed up the script, and somehow it got traction, and New Line picked it up. So Interesting. This Interesting. is how that got made. I do wonder what the original script was, but I, how, I don't know how I'd find that. Also, Disney was in that weird period with their live-action movies in the 80s, like stuff like Flight of the Navigator. I, just don't, I can't see this fitting in that at all. The Pinocchio doll was a combination of CG, stop-motion, and puppet work. A lot of it's really good. Yeah, outside of the CG, which, again, isn't much on Pinocchio. It's on, like, Jiminy Cricket. And well, a lot of his eyes and some of his facial features movement are CG. It's overlaying on the original puppet. Right, but overlay is always a lot better to look at. Than, yes, I agree. Than just, just straight-up CG. So I would say a lot of this stuff is very good. Pepe was originally voiced by Wallace Shawn. You'll remember his voice from The Princess Bride and Toy Story. He does Rex in Toy Story, the nervous dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> but he was replaced by David Doyle of Charlie's Angels. And I could not find why he was replaced, and even more perplexing, why they didn't take his voice out of the trailer. Yeah, as, as early or as late in the game as like the, when the trailers were coming out for this movie, Sean's voice is in the trailer as the Pepe character and in the credit block he is listed as the and it is and Wallace Shawn as Pepe yeah and in the credit in the trailer credits so he would made it all the way to the trailer and then just last minute was replaced by David Doyle yeah and they just didn't rewrite the credit why wouldn't they do that yeah I have no idea why this all happened so last second yeah something happened it's weird so when we we actually watch we'll play a little clip here of Gene Siskel and Ebert and it's funny Siskel liked this Ebert did not there's none of the visual excitement of the animated 1940 version of Pinocchio and to take just one example in this movie Jiminy Cricket basically just hops around and chirps his dialogue and reminded me unfortunately of the roaches in Joe's apartment there's nothing to compare with his tightrope walking on a spider web in the classic version. Well, it doesn't compare with the Disney classic, let's be sure. But actually, I thought that this picture, and I haven't read the Collodi story, so I can't say definitively, but with their screen credit, and I, I can intuit that this film probably is more cl- more closely allied with the book and some of the story. Yeah, issues. but that doesn't necessarily make it. it. Doesn't make, I didn't say it's better than that. I'm very clear it isn't better. Mm-hmm. But I, what I did find is that I thought that the cricket character was interesting. I liked the picture. I was more dazzled by the special effects than I have been in special effects pictures this summer. Uh, it was. I thought it was so very. Your, your thumb is up. My thumb is marginally up. It uh, sounds a lot like us. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Except we like each other, and those two did not. Yes. Now, you found, while going through the Wikipedia page, that there was a direct-to-video sequel of this. So this is crazy. I thought this movie was called The New Adventures of Pinocchio. All my life, I thought that was the name of this movie. When when you said that, I believed you, even though I had been looking up information on this movie. Right. I was like, oh, yeah, it's called The New Adventures of Pinocchio. You that's were so this convincing. Is this, is, this is what this movie's called. No, that's the name of the sequel that I had no idea that this movie had a sequel. I don't know how this got mishmashed in my brain. I've definitely never seen the sequel, ever. Nope. From 1999, direct-to-video sequel. I've never seen it. But for some reason, its name stuck in my head more than this one's title. Like, yeah, maybe know. maybe it should have been the title of this so they could do whatever they wanted with it and just make it a whole new story. But uh, I don't know. Maybe one day we'll have to do the new adventures. Yeah, if I can find it on tape, yeah. I'll, I'll do it. I'll watch it. I've never seen it. Martin Landau that's... and Udo Kier are back in it. Yeah. And Udo Kerr is in drag as his estranged <laughs> wife. Oh, that's great. And you've got here that uh, JTT was replaced by Gabriel Thompson, the uh, chocolate kid from the movie Enemy at the Gates. 
Do you remember this time period of when they came up with movie clip games? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I absolutely remember this. Um, I just, because I watched, there is a 15-minute video online of the beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. I forgot how much they put in clips of the movies into these games. Yeah. Because it's clip heavy. Yes. And they also tend to make clips for the game. I noticed while watching it, there were clips that were not in this movie of Martin Lando that were in the game. Yeah. So I'm thinking they knew this because this, uh, they introduced this in, say, the video here, the VHS. I'm assuming IBM had a deal with them, and they recorded these clips while they had Martin Lando oh, they on had to paycheck. Have. Yeah, so this was actually well thought out, and they must have thought this thing was going to be a hit. Oh, yeah. If any, any of these movies that had like tie-in games or things like that were usually their big movies, uh, studios' big movies. So, like, they must have... If they took the time while they were on set to film things for the video game, they must have They must have thought that this was going to be huge. Yes. And just like the movie here, this game flopped. <laughs> but it does have uh, a kid from America Pie in it. Yep, the Shermanator. He is, is star of the game, and he's just like, good job, you figured out the puzzle. Let's go on to our next adventure. So let's, uh, let's come back with what's going on in the museum. This is the second time I've had to reclaim my property from you. That belongs in a museum. So do you. Matt, what are you putting in the museum? I am putting morphing into the museum because it's so, it's a thing I miss. And it's horrifying in this movie, and I want to see it in more movies because it, it's it's weird and it's cool. Uh, so I'm putting uh, little boys morphing into donkeys into the museum this week. <laughs> I'm going to go a little negative with it, and I'm going to repeat kind of what I've done with Jumanji. If you can't do it with CG, don't do it! <laughs> Are you putting Pepe in yes. the museum? <laughs> and I, I, I want to, because our podcast tends to try to focus on the positive, finding the gold in these, but I could easily put the puppet of Pinocchio in this, but I think Jim Henson will get enough room in our museum oh, later yeah. on, later There's movies. There's plenty of VHSs plenty of where, yeah. And so I just want to put in, it's mostly about, why don't you just make him a puppet? Pepe should be a puppet. Or leave your your stop motion alone because the few shots that he was stop motion were great. Leave him alone. <laughs> but it's just... They don't oh, need to be God. CG enhanced with whatever thing they were doing over him. Like, oh, so gross looking. Oh, and side note, if you're going to replace Pepe's voice, don't leave the original actor in the trailer. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, Pepe just is bad. That's a lump of coal. Yeah, it's, it's in, in case this is your first episode, you know, because you wanted to jump in at some JTT. We put something in a museum every. We try to find the gold in these VHSs and our lumps of plastic. We try to find the gold, uh, so we put something away, or we put a lump of coal in there that we need to learn from. Pepe is definitely a lump of coal that we need yeah, to learn from. I just I, and we still haven't learned from because there's still so many CG sidekicks in movies I know. that are terrible. We haven't learned yet. <laughs> Matt, if you're walking through the Goodwill or if you see this in a resale shop, do you pick it up? Why not? That's sort of mine. Why not? It's not going to be the worst thing in your collection. It's not going to be the best. But it is an interesting, I guess, uh, nostalgic window into very specifically 1996. So a vague yes. A vague yes. Pick it up. Why, if it's a quarter, absolutely. Put it on your shelf. I'm going to go with a vague no. And it's kind of tough on this because I wanted to go with a vague yes as well because of the nostalgia of JTT and what Jim Henson did with this. But what I finally decided was I got to go with a vague no, uh, you know, uh, because you've seen this. Just put in your tape of Disney's Pinocchio yes. on set? I don't see, or the many, many, many different variations that we found on Wikipedia. So let's look at those real quick. Now that you know whether you're going to pick this movie up or not. Let's take a look at some of the other ones you can pick up instead that uh, we looked at. So one of the first ones, there is a TV movie sequel to Disney's original called Pinocchio in Outer Space. I've seen this movie. I have the tape of it if we ever need to do that for some reason. I've seen it. It's outrageous. This one is worth watching. I wish point. I wish this Pinocchio would have did the same thing. <laughs> Just do your own thing. I don't know why Disney did that. 
but whatever. <laughs> I mean, that is definitely a name that sticks out. Pinocchio in outer space. It, it's, it's bad, but it's worth watching for sure. Now, another one that jumped out to us was one that you've seen and I have not, but it's the horror movie of it, Pinocchio's Revenge. Yeah, this is another one, another like light recommend, also from 1996. Uh, not a great little horror movie, but some cool like puppet murders and things like that. Yeah, and then the really odd one that really caught my mind, or caught my eye, was Pinocchio 3000, where it's just this god-awful early 2000s computer animated one and oh Matt have you seen anything? I've not seen this one and I'm good <laughs> you don't need to one of my one of my other favorites though uh, was uh, what was it called Pinocchio uh, and the Emperor of the Night yes Pinocchio and the Emperor of the Night from 1987 I have to see this movie I actually think I have seen this movie it looked very familiar when we went back and watched the trailer uh, New World Pictures which was Roger Corman's 80s company mm -hmm. uh, put this one out uh, on Christmas 1987 looks amazing I really want to see this one uh, I may have seen it as a kid but I do want to find this as an adult this is by Filmation their studio their animation studio and if you know anything about them They've done some weird, wacky, crazy stuff. I mean, they've, I mean, the Ghostbusters. Yeah. Now, this was not the Ghostbusters that we know and love from the 80s. This, this is, is the, the original yeah. Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they've done a lot of really crazy stuff, so I, I suggest the nerds get into that because that's too much to talk about right. on this podcast. I really want to see this one. Uh, Pinocchio 3000, I can go with never seeing, but Pinocchio and the Emperor of the Night, I need to find... And I, I might I might have this in my basement. If I might. It looks so familiar to me that I might have this. And if I can find it, we'll we'll talk about it. But this one seems really, really cool. I agree. Yeah, I would talk about that in a second. Matt, what are we doing next week? So next week will be our next mini episode. Mm -hmm. And we are going to do it is the beginning of January. We're gonna do our top tens of twenty seventeen. And our bottoms. Well, yeah, our little bottoms too, but, but uh, mostly top ten. We're, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna keep it positive. Yeah, we, there is some negative we have to talk about, but ooh, ooh, <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt. But uh, I, I, I have my top ten ready to go, and I'm very excited to talk about it because I think 2017, looking back, may have been a horrible year socially. <laughs> it was a great year for film. Make sure to tune in for that. We're gonna have our top tens, and we're gonna have our little worsts as well next week for the mini sode. Uh, you will not want to miss this one. Thank you for joining us again, and remember to be kind. Rewind! <laughs>